Hello, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. Over the night, set up some basic infrastructure here at the new base location. We have some power with wind turbines connected through power lines, and they are also feeding back to our basic platform here, where we'll be able to do some work, as, as well as we have the advanced drill, which you may notice is completely silent. I modified the script's files to shut them the hell up because they are way too loud. And that's feeding into a smeltery to turn that stone into various trace materials, which is then getting sucked out by that conveyor into the cargo container, being made into steel plate, which is then being used by the build and repair to build up this platform. And any of the excess uh, gravel is being stuck into this incinerator, which I turn off, turn on and off every so often, just to burn off that excess gravel and get rid of it. But what I'd like to do for this base, and just going forward, is I want to capitalize on the fact that I do have the power lines mod, and I do have the pipelines mod. And I can make things into these separate buildings and then tie them all together afterwards. Uh, even if I'm just going to run conveyors from building to building, and yeah, technically it's all the same grid, I'd like to have a spot where this is the spot for all of this processing. And that's it. I never take one of those on somewhere else. This is it. This is all I'm going to need. And it's this one location, it's this one building. To start that off, I have a design that some of you might have actually seen already. If you have seen uh, Splitsy's Wrong Way Up, there was a time on that where they attacked the bots on an ice lake, and that had a hydrogen fuel station where Splitsy and crew blew it up. <laughs> Which is totally them, too. It's just like, uh, exactly what I expect you to do. And that uh, station was my design. And so I have a modified version of that which, uh, I mean, since I'm on a planet here, I don't really care about uh, the oxygen tanks that were in there. That's more of like a, if you're going to go to space thing. And so I can just focus on the fact that uh, it has a whole bunch of O2H2s, and that's space where the oxygen tanks were. And it is a giant base for producing and stockpiling hydrogen. Uh, I'm going to turn the build and repair off for a second because as soon as I put this blueprint in this this thing's going to uh, try to start welding immediately and it's hydro station this was the version you saw on Splitsy's thing. This is an upgraded version I just uh, modified this morning. So let me just uh, quickly Pitch? Yeah, pitch 180. There we go. We can stick it off here to the side and take a fly through of its projection. We have on the exterior 10 large hydro tanks, which will store incredible quantities of hydrogen. Yes, they are highly explosive. I know. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I want there to be a tiny bit of vulnerability in my base, so that if I do not have good defenses and an assert pops up, it's my damn fault that I die. And honestly, this thing going up in flames in one giant kablooey would make for some good video. So we're going to keep the design as is with the exposed tanks. Inside we have a nice hallway filled with O2H2 generators and batteries and such. There is a control seat here with some various automatic LCDs, which show off the current status of the base. 
a large cargo container, which will fill with the ice. And then up top, we've got some uh, hydrogen engines for that emergency power production. Because this thing could be, oh, I have surplus, let's make a whole bunch of hydrogen. Oh, I have um, a deficit, let's use it to, to burn. You know, for example, oh, uh, the discovery comes back and I need to slurp off a bunch of hydrogen. I'll transfer this through the pipes down to the coast and plug it in there and suck some of the hydrogen out of it. Or, oh, I have a plane that landed that's running on batteries. I'm going to turn on the engine so that I can have a burst of power to recharge its batteries. That kind of feel. And I love that someone is flying in front of the sky, the, the sun right now. That looks so cool. But what we need to do is position this correctly. So I'm going to pop into spectator, align my character up at the projector, and then use build vision because build vision is amazing. And I never want it to change. I've seen some of the changes and I do not want to use it. It makes me sad internally looking at those changes. Uh, let's see here. I don't want it to be that far off of the ground. So, we'll drop down the vertical here. What else can we get? This, 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 the shrubbery is in the way. And I'm trying to think about where I want to put it. Uh, really anywhere around here that it fits for now, and then I'll sort of expand the base out from it. I'm going to give it a berth of like 10, 20, probably 20 meters all around it in terms of I'm not building anything close to this because it's explosive, <laughs> at least not anything important. And so I just kind of want to stick it somewhere. If I come out here. Uh, how far do I have to go out if I drop it one more vertically? How far do I have to go out this way until it looks good? Because I don't want it to hover. Like, see back here? That's annoying. I want it to be connected on this end. That's good. And then not too... Not too, sh like, close to the ground at this end. So that you could just like walk onto it. That's a little silly. So it's just that finesse of trying to find the perfect spot for it in this uh, alternating terrain. And I can cut down these trees. So that's fine. I can slide it around as I wish. And closer to the coast is better because then it's less piping to get this thing uh, plugged into the docks. But I think here, so let me just take a look. This is basically right on the edge there for full block. Come over here, it is just barely above the terrain all the way around. Uh, I wonder if there'll be any issue. I don't think there'll be any issue with grass popping through the center here, though. If there is, I can definitely go in and, like, slice this terrain down a little bit to get rid of the grass. It should be fine. It's honestly kind of uh, too bad. I wonder if I can put decimals in those offsets. Can I? Can I raise this up by, like... 0.5 because that would be kind of nice or are those solids can I put in a number there 0.5 or is it just round to 16 oh, it just goes to 16 that's so annoying that would be honestly kind of nice if you could project something slightly off grid because I do want to do that because if I had placed this first grid instead of, like, right here, but I had placed it, like, this slightly lower instead or slightly higher, then it would make that, you know, that ever so little bit different. 
of where it's positioned and it might fit better. Uh, I'm going to finagle with this for a second and I'll come back when I've got the perfect spot for it. I think this is the best I'm going to get for a while here. It's pretty close to the platform, but I think that's okay. If I tuck it in a tiny bit closer, we can sort of frame up against this tree here and I can leave that tree alive. And there is only like a tiny bit of a gap here, but I can just easily ignore that or throw in a couple blocks there. And then the other side is pretty good. I could conceivably move it one over to be closer to this Is that horizontal offset? Yeah, one over slightly closer to the shrubbery, and that's okay. And that gap goes away a little bit. And then the only problem is the fact that there is this uh, tree in the way, which goes away. <laughs> All right, so with that, then, the only thing I need to do is turn this thing back on, which it'll start building up the exterior of it as soon as I grab some stuff for a block and then place it in a way that there is a portion of this buildable like that. And now that thing will start going, oh hey, I got work to do. And it'll start working over here and building this thing up. Now, you may be waiting, thinking like, man, how's he going to get all this ice up here? He's going to have to build a great big conveyor down to the shoreline, and that's going to be annoying. I could do it that way, and I don't really want to. Uh, first thing, I want to see if this uh, build and repair has a... Uh, I want to see its, its show area, and I need to... Maneuver its show area slightly to its right. Which doesn't show up in its build vision. Okay. So it needs to move slightly right. Let's go, say, 30 meters right. And also, we're going to drop 30 meters. Because we're not building high, but we are going to build low down into the water. So this is good. It'll cover this entire area with everything that I plan to do. So while this is beginning and it's working its way out, we're going to turn off its show area here. We need to plan because it is going to do eventually get to a point where it's going to cover this stuff up. So I need to dig it quickly. We can see that the large cargo container is right here with a conveyor below it. Uh, I'm going to put a um, sorter here instead manually once we get to this position because I don't... This is the only place... Uh, wait, is this the only location where this is connected? I think it is. Shit, I don't want to do that. Uh, wait, it's connected to the top. And then the top goes out and the top is connected to all of the everything okay so what I want this to do is I'm gonna drill down right here and eventually I'm gonna hit water because you know water mod just adds a circle of water to the planet and if you drill down in any location deep enough you'll get to water so I can add a conveyor line straight down and a collector. And I can just get water, get, oh, sorry, get ice from this exact location. So I'm literally digging a well. So after this is done, then the idea would be, because I need to go a fair amount down in order to hit this water. The ice is going to get sucked up into that collect this uh, conveyor here and into this cargo container then I put a sorter here and this cargo container can go out through the top 
which will go to the engines, and it'll also go along the spine of the thing, which then goes down into the uh, H2O2 generators, which will then create hydrogen. But essentially, the exit of it, which will be in the back, will only exit hydrogen that I can pull out instead of overwhelming the entire system with ice. And that's the plan. There we go. Okay, good. We got a few meters into the water here. And we just need to populate this pipe with uh, conveyor tubes and such. And get that working. So you, uh, build and repair. Make sure you off for a second, please. Just so I don't have to deal with you for a moment. Because I also want to steal these plates. Because I need to set things up. As you are building stuff too quickly. Using up all my plates. Using up all my iron. I'm going to have to go on a trip over to the uh, iron node and bring back a whole bunch of iron. Which is, it's probably a slowly filling up, waiting for me to come. So if I get all this set up, back to here. And there, to this conveyor, and then I can place this sorter in position. Uh, which I'm not going to use an industrial sorter, because I find it hard to tell which way they're pointing. I'll just use a regular sorter. Because that's very obvious which way it's pointing. I need a little bit. Okay. Let's go get some. And the sorter can get plopped in right here, pointing that direction. A build and repair can repair, uh, can build up the rest of that. And I'm just going to need to dig down a little bit here so I have some access. Oh, I might have to dig myself another tunnel just to be able to fly out of this in the end. But I should be able to do a conveyor all the way to the bottom. So, conveyor junction, which is just steel plate, and then a collector, which again is just steel plate. How many do I have? It's 13. Not enough. Okay. Grab some more. And then all I need to do is just keep bringing resources up to this thing and feeding it while it uh, builds these different bits. And then this thing should be stuck together. So, let me just dig down here real quick. Right. Should be able to fly out through there and that'll be my little escape hatch. Then from here, I just drop pipe all the way down our conveyor tubes. Oh god, please don't go into the stone too much. I don't have to drill this out. It's not straight. No. I was afraid of that. And it's also why I have uh, build and repair, so I don't actually have to manually build this stuff up. I can just lay it into position and then just feed this thing resources, and eventually it'll start working. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> this is annoying. Why can't your engineer dig straight down when he's aiming straight down? Why must it be a small angle? Ah. I think if I want to set up geothermal, it's going to be just like this. That's going to be real annoying. Alright, so we're down to the water. I just want to make sure we're like a full conveyor or two into the water, just so that it never really has issues as the tide comes in and out. So I think there is probably fine. I just open up this cavern a little bit. And we'll do, we'll do the collector on there. I think that's deep enough. That's got to be good enough. Alright, and I can fly out through my tunnel here. 
And then, let's get this sorter built up. And we'll do this conveyor sorter. Ice. Should be able to uh, blacklist. Ice. There we go. Now we can just turn on the build and repair. Let it work. There we go. This will be our first major building here. Now there are some modifications I could do to this thing. Like, I could remove these bits of armor here. And the conveyor junctions that are underneath would be perfect for like a uh, 30 millimeters. If I wanted to put some uh, some defenses on it. Uh, alternatively, I could just add some wind power to the top of this. Uh, it would be kind of not as efficient. Because it's not that tall and it's uh, uh, be kind of in the way. They'd be too close to each other. But it's something we did on the version that you saw on Splits. He's wrong way up. Is we changed out these half blocks up. Instead to be full blocks up. And then put wind turbines on all of them. To give the base a little bit more power. Which. Was actually a nice thing to do. Gave it a little bit of. Uh, structure. And. Uh, get a little bit of power of itself. So if it was like cut off from the rest of the base, it could conceivably still make a little bit of hydrogen just by itself. But this base now needs the support of the Discovery. We need resources. We need different stuff. Uh, I think at the, mo the moment uh, probably the best option is to ground the discovery. Oh, would be the best way to do this. A pipeline? Could I pipeline the discovery to the base? So, I'm thinking about this. And, oh yeah, that's more than deep enough. That's perfect. <laughs> that, that, that drill shaft looks awesome, by the way. I'm thinking what I could do is on one of these ports here, I could, or just put another conveyor junction onto it, and then have a pipeline facing inwards. And then on the Discovery, uh, it's kind of like how when you have a large grid ship and then you land with landing gear, you can use wind turbines when you can only use those on static. I wonder if you have a pipeline and you have it on a thing that's with landing gear, it would function. Because I know the pipelines aren't supposed to work with with large grids, they're only supposed to work with static grids. So, let's try it. I think we might be able to get this to function. Because if then that's the case, what I can do is I can... Uh, I have access to cargo in various locations. I could I could drill through the side here and get access to some of these cargo junctions. Uh, at my turrets, I can um, cut out through the hull and put up the thing. That would work. Or even up here, I can I can just pop out right here up and then put a, a pipeline going all across, and that would be nice high enough it might actually be able to see the base. Uh, but in the meantime we need a mag plate. Or something along those lines. So that we can uh, ground the ship. So we'll take this and we'll plunk it on the bottom here. And then we'll maneuver the ship into a place where we'll lock that. And then the ship will then just be beached permanently. Or at least mostly permanently. And then we can use its power and we can use its production capability to uh, get this functioning. 
as it looks like the front end of this is already kind of beached already. So we should probably move the uh, discovery anyway here. So we're going to back up because it'll be out currently it's outside of the range of what it would want to do for a pipeline and we're going to sort of attach the mag plate over there on the side where that sandy beach area is up here yeah, where that sand meets that rock is probably going to be a perfect spot. And I will... Should be able to just swing this back end in. And it will eventually... Hook on, and then we'll be good. And if I need to get this thing out in the future, it'll be an annoyance, but I'll figure it out. Mag plate attached. There we go. So we are static now. So if we wanted to, we could put a wind turbine on this. And we don't have to worry about dampeners, which means our power draw should be much lower, which is always good. Okay. So. Thank. Hydrogen, thank. Already using any power, which is good. Empty in like a week. Ah! So much power available. So let's see. Let's grab a pipeline hub. And take off this catwalk here. Oh, I have the um, projector for repairs. So I should turn that off. Because it's going to... Oh, good. It's already off. It's going to try to immediately uh, replace this. And then we'll get rid of the conveyor in here and then we'll put in a junction which I need to get some resources for and then I think I might need to push this up a little bit maybe like two blocks because that's what I can fit and then we'll place a pipeline hub need aluminum, and it needs to be facing that direction. And we should be able to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's pipeline helper. Uh, I have to alt tab uh, space engineers pipelines. Pipeline mod. What is the text chat thing it is slash pipeline toggle that's it slash pipeline toggle there we go there's the uh, there's the cast of where it's going oh so it's slightly off where it is that's annoying I'd have to catch it over here and pull it back over there. That's not what I want. Or I just need to reposition the discovery ever so slightly by um, unhooking and then turning. So, park. And then turn. And that's better. And then we'll just move into position here. Turn a little bit back to the left. And still coat that. Yeah, we're good. Now we just... Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving until we lock up. There we go. Boom! Excellent. So now that should be covering over the part of the base 
where I can get that to connect. Wonderful. Awesome. So now I'm going to put on a junction here. And a pipeline facing in. And it just needs an aluminum plate, but that is past the functional line. So once that connects up. Ah, oh, it's not going to work. No, oh, that's too bad. I was hoping that that would work. I guess what I need to do is I need to... I need to put a connector on here. I need to put something on this, like, ground something in the ground, and then, and then pipeline it over. Damn. Oh, well. At least now I know what I need to do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can I get off this rock, please? Uh, I gotta set that mag plate to be, uh... Not automatically locking. And then slide my ass off this rock, damn it. And we're back floating. There we go. Okay, so if that's not going to work. I know the best, next best option. At least really, I could kind of use that as like a, <laughs> a spotlight. <laughs> okay, next best option. We are going to drill out this. And get access to this conveyor. And then we're going to conveyor off of this over to a connector. And then off the ground here, which is going to be lined to the ship, we're going to come up. And put a connector on that. Which might need to hinge it a bit, but I might just be able to, to f wait till the tides are right and get that to work. And then off of that is going to be a pipeline. Although I might need to raise that up a bit. You know, that get that feeling. Because we'll shoot the pipeline in that way. Mm, that should work. That'll work. Oh. Right. This uh, new pipeline is going to... Yep, totally cover that space. And so... If I get this thing built, it should connect. Good. Yeah, it connected up. So that is all the way up back to the base. And now I just need to get these two connected. And I can turn off the uh, pipeline toggle. Which... Uh, should be... Very, very quickly here. I just need copper wires, which I always need copper wires. <laughs> There's never a time where I don't need copper wires in this content playthrough. <laughs> okay, so now I'll fix this in a bit, but I should be able to. Dock up. You just gotta wait till the tide is perfect to connect. Because we are a little 
high right now. But if I leave it right there, when the tide recedes in a moment, I should be able to connect from the outside, just putting it in automatically. So I just need to find that connector, which will be the new one that's not named, and lock. Good. And now it's going to start building this up, which is fine. Yeah. Better to have that nice and strong. And now we should be able to shunt materials down this pipeline, down to this base as it needs. So, is this base going to start requesting it? Or am I going to have to shunt it myself? So if we look at the control panel here. Ooh, all this stuff is being built up. That's very good. We need to give it things, probably. But I could just start, like, piling in the resources as this stuff needs it. So, like, we're going to need a ton of wires and a ton of motors and a whole bunch of that kind of stuff. So let me just pile in all of my stuff that I have here in this setup, and I'll just push it all out that direction. Put it all into the pipeline hub. So we'll go the pipeline... And then we'll go for our cargo here. And then just be like... Where's my motors? Here's some motors. Take those. You'll need them. Sort of thing. Here's some... Aluminum. Take those. Oh, where's my tubes and stuff? I'll be used in other stuff. Everything's in different locations. No. Yeah, you're gonna need tubes. Yeah, I can make more stuff out of my extruders. You'll need this kind of stuff out there. <laughs> A lot of construction components. Sure, you'll need some electromagnets. Why not some grids? I will get a better sense of what it needs in the future, but for now, I can just literally just give it a whole crap ton of stuff and figure out what it needs uh, in more detail later. Well, that's for sure. Is the production capacity of the Discovery is now available to the uh, the main base. And I don't want that to be power line. That's not what I want it to be named. It's the new base. And this hub here should be filled with resources that can be placed into this cargo container. And then the, uh, Build and repair over here has plenty of stuff to work from and can go absolutely buck wild. It's almost built up this control seat. Excellent! Well, check my recording here. I think we've made good progress. Uh, the sun is starting to go down, and realistically, I just need to baby this for a while. Keep feeding it some resources and maybe start up a couple of other processing things here. Uh, like, ooh, I could totally make a wire drawer over here to work on the copper that is here and just have it con just constantly make me copper wire. So that way, I'm not having to draw any more copper wire from the Discovery, which is already oh god, just so overrun with the limited quantities of copper wire it has. Because all these are going to need copper wire. Everything needs copper goddamn wire. So let's do that. That'll be the final thing we'll do in this episode. We'll go and we'll slap down a, a wire drawer right here. Get this thing 
start it up and go get the materials we need from the discovery. And <laughs> the water, the water rising is so above the flotation. If we cut the connection right now, this discovery would just go ba boing in the water. <laughs> Let's not do that and say we did. Because I don't want my boat to explode. Uh, copper wires and copper wires, copper wires. There we go. Excellent. We go. Wire drawer. Now this thing can take in all of the copper that's on this grid. And then I can just set this to make like, you know, 20,000 copper wire. Who cares? Just just make copper wire until you die. <laughs> and that'll support this grid. Heck yeah! So our first major building, the hydrogen storage and power facility is currently being built up. Uh, from this initial starting grid, we'll probably cut it back and move it around and reposition it as needed, as like this little construction bit with the uh, build and repair on it but uh, yeah you've got a whole bunch of hydrogen storage a whole bunch of h2o2 generators and hydrogen engines you need to uh, just handle all of our fuel needs we'll eventually we'll pipe out something to the coast and I will probably do that from our plunge drill down here into the depths we will drill sideways do, 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 and make a underground pipeline that will then pop out right here at the coast and have a separate dock area that is connected to the main base through the underground pipeline won't that be awesome uh, I'll we'll have to make sure that it doesn't get overloaded with ice by putting a sorter on it, but that's easy to do. And then we'll be able to connect to the base and have essentially like a fuel hose that we can connect to it. Uh, alternatively, I'll do something else like that, but maybe run it overland. I don't know. We'll do something to get uh, resources down to the base. Uh, sorry, uh, resources down to the, uh, the coast here. Maybe double-ended pipes like uh, pipelines but going each way who knows we'll do something but for now it is time for the sun to go down for me to uh just work on building up this uh hydrogen station keep feeding it resources and uh possibly go grab the wave skimmer maybe remake it into the sorry wave rider re remake it into the wave skimmer and pop off to our iron mine to go and grab a full cargo container of iron to bring back to speed this along. But that is going to be in between this episode and the next. Next episode, we'll be getting this thing fully online and uh, thinking about what's the next thing to build. Maybe a, a better plane, probably. Now that I have a final location, I'll have some fuel and I'll have some power set up. I think a proper cargo plane, something that can land essentially anywhere, maybe something with VTOL capability. I want to be able to take off on this beach and fly my ass over to the iron mine and like, oh man, this, this beach is steep. Maybe land in the water, maybe be able to just, like, pancake land on on the land, and go and gather some of the iron that's stockpiling over here, because it would be very important to have. But for now, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, and good hunting out there, fellow space engineers! <laughs>